Welcome to Bethlehem Lutheran Church and a very special welcome to any guests who may be in worship today with us as we observe All Saints Day. Today's liturgy is Divine Service 4, which is on page 203 in the front of our hymnal. Today we are also celebrating the Lord's Supper. If you believe that you are truly receiving the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in and with the bread and the wine, we invite you to join us. We begin our service this morning by singing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. 
If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a cold ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say it together, our introit. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me, for you are my rock and my fortress. And your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord faithful God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that, together with them, we may come to the unspeakable joys that you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning comes from Revelation chapter 7 and will also serve as the text for this morning's message. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the seas or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every tribe nation, the peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading this morning comes from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as He is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. 
Our gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Whenever I think about All Saints Day, I remember a story that my dad once shared with me, and I know I've shared with many of you before. It's a story of a man who was traveling by plane, and the person sitting next to him noticed that he seemed lost in thought and asked what he was thinking about. And the man seemed to take a moment before responding and said that he had been thinking about his son. He said that he had a little boy who had been battling cancer and had been battling it for years through intense therapies, but nothing was working. The young boy knew what was happening to him, and he knew that he did not have much longer to live. One night, the boy asked his father to read him one of his favorite bedtime stories and then to help him move into a more comfortable position so that he could sleep. And after praying together, his son closed his eyes again to sleep and said, I'll see you in the morning, Daddy. By the time this person finished his story, the man sitting next to him on the plane was in tears, and so was he. Even though he was crying, he smiled and said, I can't wait for the morning to come. Like many others in our own lives, that little boy joined the saints who have come before us. He joined the saints who are in heaven with our Lord and are eagerly waiting for Christ to make his return to earth. Jesus Christ's return will usher in the day of judgment, and everyone who believes in Jesus will be clothed in his righteousness, and God will see him, all of them, as his own dear children. In Revelation, we're told about this of the saints as the great multitude that no one could number from every nation, tribe, people, and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. That great Lamb, Jesus Christ, is the reason why they and we will be able to stand before God at the end of days. Even though we're not perfect, even though we've sinned more times than we can count, God sees us as his own because his one and only son. God sent Jesus to us because we needed a savior. We needed someone who could bear our sins to be our sacrifice. That sacrifice had to be Jesus. He and he alone was able to keep all of God's commandments, all of his laws. We, on the other hand, we seem to break them daily. We break them. And when we break one, we break them all. Only Jesus was able to do this. Only he was capable of bearing all of our sins by hanging on the cross. And when that moment came, when Jesus suffered all the sins of all time for that one brief moment, God could not bear the sight of his son covered in sin. And God turned away from him. Without Jesus, our God would turn away from us too. And we would be lost to eternal torment. It's something that we can't really grasp or comprehend. We hear a lot of hell, and it's shown and talked about in various places, and how it's a place that's filled with fire. But in truth, we can't fully understand what hell is really like, since hell is the absence of God forever. From the day we were born till the day... We will be with our Lord in heaven. We have always been in the presence of our God. Even though we can't see him, 
And sometimes it feels like he's abandoned us in the most tragic hours in our lives. He's always there, right beside us. He's with us when we fall asleep, when we wake up, when we celebrate, when we mourn. He's always with us. And as believers in Jesus Christ, we will be with him for all eternity. We will join the multitude of saints who are already with Christ, and we will be with them forever in the new creation to come. What will that new creation be like? We can expect when spending eternity with our Lord and our Savior, what will that be like? The Apostle John tells us in Revelation that he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, thirst no more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. No pain, no sorrow, no Remorse, no regret, no sin. Sin will be no more. When Jesus went to the cross, He bore our sins upon Himself. He conquered sin forever. And when Jesus rose from the dead three days after His death on the cross, He conquered death forever as well. In the new creation, there will be no sin. There will be no death the world will be remade perfect without sin as God intended it to be from the start. The new creation to come will be a new start, like a new day. And that glorious morning begins with the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And like the boy and the father in the story, we too eagerly wait for that wonderful morning to come. We can't hardly wait for that morning to finally arrive so that we can be with all the saints who have come before us and be with our Lord forever in that new creation He's promised. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We now make profession of our Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. Please rise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. In our prayers this morning, 
After each petition that ends with, Lord, in your mercy, we respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, send your spirit to the ministers of the church who bring the good news of Christ's death and resurrection, that they may work through the preaching of this gospel to gather the lost, kindle faith in those who do not yet believe, and sustain us to the day of Christ's coming. Lord, in your mercy, gentle Lord, visit the homes of your people, that they may be places where faith is nurtured and where we learn to live our new lives in holiness and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed are the persecuted who suffer for your sake and whose witness calls all to faithfulness. Bring peace to the nations. Make our leaders wise, just, and honorable. We also ask that you would bless and protect our police officers, firefighters, disaster relief workers, medical personnel, and members of our armed forces, especially Valerie Hosteller and Hank Peening. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, give comfort, peace, strength, and healing to all who suffer in heart, mind, body, or soul. Hear us as we especially pray for Carter and Xander Herzl, Joseph May, Rhonda Fike, Lois Upton, Aaron Peening, Tara Gall, Ken Burkhardt, Angela's father Ron Stone, and friends Hannah Ross and Alex, for the Anderson's neighbor Anthony, for continued recovery for Rodney Bronzeroth and Ava Wharton, for Krista's friend Nancy Nevis, for Dave and Eileen's daughter-in-law Rita, and for Ron and Caroline's daughter, Laura, and her family. We also ask you, Father, to be with all of the Dinert family as they mourn the death of Joanne. Give comfort to them as they grieve. Surround them with your presence and give them the peace that only you can give. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, be with your church and all her members who belong to you by baptism and faith. At the bidding of the Lamb, our shepherd, give us ears to hear your word and faith to receive him in this blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant that we may be brought to everlasting life with the faithful who have gone before us, who now rest from their labors. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Father, We give you thanks that you have washed us in the blood of the Lamb, written our names in the book of life, and made us a royal priesthood and heirs of an eternal inheritance. Though we are unworthy of your saving grace, we pray to you to hear us in the name of Jesus Christ, in whom, with whom, and through whom all glory, honor is yours, Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we now collect our offerings.
Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you send your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead, and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death, and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, We Shout the glory of your name, sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet, in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross, and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Christ broken for you. The body of 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 Christ broken for you.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. your servant depart Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. You may be seated.
Again, good morning and welcome to All in Worship today with us. I have uh, just a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, first, uh, thank you all uh, so much for everyone who helped make our Reformation Day celebration so much fun. Also, join us after some fellowship time this morning as we continue our Bible study on Ephesians. Uh, also, another reminder uh, that the Committee for Bethlehem's 125th anniversary would like you to share a favorite memory of a time here in the church. Uh, if you'd like to write, uh, print, or even share a picture taken of the event, uh, we have a collection box in the Narthex. Uh, are there any announcements this morning that I may have missed? Yes, Phil. Yeah, a few months ago, there was a uh, big book back here with confirmation pictures from the past. Uh, that was Again, if you've seen that uh, book with all the pictures, uh, please let us know because uh, that will be very helpful for the anniversary coming up. Any other announcements? Any other announcements? If not, have a wonderful week in the Lord.